Hey y'all, it's Mandy, and we are going to talk about my week nine with Mount Jaro, which was last week. I start my, or do my 10th shot today. Um, and week nine was also, I didn't mention it, but I did titrate up. It was my first, I mean, I didn't mention in my last video that I was going to, that's what I should say. But um, I did titrate up to 7.5 and I Sunday was my first shot on that milligram so let's jump right in and talk about it um I every morning when I wake up while I'm having my morning coffee I have this um fitness planner let's see that found it on Amazon I like it um a lot let me find the blank page and show you Well, let me try to find a black page. Let me just go to the back. Um, you can see. It's got a spot for you to um, like write your programs out and each exercise, your weight, your reps, and uh, that way you can keep track of when you add weight, add reps. It's got all this information up here, place for your water, your cardio, your weight, and all that. So... Um, I've been using this <coughs> for, well, that long. <laughs> and I like it, and I'm probably going to order another one. Um, but I've been using it lately for my Mount Jaro notes. So every morning when I wake up and I'm having my morning coffee, I write down notes from the day before while it's fresh on my mind. And I wait and do that so that I can just go ahead and jot down how my sleep was that night. So, I have notes for every day of the week. And I'm just going to quickly read through those. And that will help me not be all over the place um, with this particular thing anyway. Because it's probably going to happen before the end of this video, let's face it. Um, if this is your first time here, hi, I'm Mandy. I ramble. I take rabbit trails. I blunder over my words. Things that sound right here and that are right here don't always come out right here. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Just don't be a negative Nancy or a cranky Karen about it. I can take constructive criticism. Don't mind being, you know, if, if I say something wrong, I don't mind somebody saying, hey, sis, you know, you informed the people of this when it's actually this. Just looking out. That's fine, but don't come for me, sis. Please, there's no sense in people getting on here and just being flat out mean. Like, what do you benefit from it? I've never had that experience personally, um, but I've seen it done to other people, and I'm just like, mm, that's not a good look. So, if you've been here with me from day one, bless your heart, and I thank you. Okay, so first dose of Mount Jaro 7.5. Um, I gave myself last week in my belly. I'm going to insert a clip at the end of this along with uh, what I ate all week, how I have in my other videos, and if you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and catch those and you'll get yourself up to speed with um, kind of like my, my routine or my program of how I'm, I'm doing this thing. Will it change over time? I don't know, maybe, but this is how we're doing it for now. And also, we're doing this on my phone for now. And that's why the angle is how it is. Um, I do have a camera. I'm still really, I mean, I know how to use it, but it's the um, getting it from the camera to my MacBook to here, to YouTube, that I've got to sit down and get the hang up. So, till then, so that I can get these videos to you in a timely manner or, you know, by the week. This is what we're going to do. Okay. So, shot day. What's last Sunday? That was my, I'm not going to repeat that. See what I almost did there? Okay, so, the day after, or the day of shot day, um, I slept. I put down really good, so I must have had one of those hard, like, she's out type of sleeps. Um... So, day two, my energy was good. No appetite. The 
thought of food was just eh, like didn't, nothing sounded good. Uh, let's say two day three. Wait a minute, no, okay, and that night, the night after shop day, I literally just told you how I done this and why, and I, um, we ain't even made it halfway through the week, and I've already did that, okay, so I clearly did not, maybe I wasn't fully awake when I done this this morning, or should have drank the coffee first, but day two, that night, okay, so I had no trouble sleeping on shot day is what I should have said. So it wasn't my notes. It was this. Okay. Um, the day after shot day, I had trouble sleeping, but I woke up with good energy in spite of not sleeping well. I, I remember this night because I tossed and turned and I feel like every hour on the hour, I was turning and looking at my clock because I felt like it was later than what it was type of thing. Y'all ever done that? Um, and in spite of that, I woke up earlier than usual with no alarm. Okay. Um, couldn't finish my morning coffee on this particular morning because I started feeling nauseous. Remember this. Energy was good throughout the day. I felt tired that evening, um, but not sleepy. I remember my husband came home from work and he had had a, a rough day. He took a nap on the couch, and I just kind of laid on the couch and watched TV, but I didn't fall asleep. It was just like, like I said, like my body just needed to lay down just to, to take a break, um, but not for sleep type thing. Okay, so that was the case for that day, and the next day, then, let's see, wait a minute, that was day three. Day four, day five. Day six, no, day three, day four, day five. My energy was good. Um, woke up hungry, but then after my morning coffee, I didn't feel hungry, and it was like I had no appetite throughout the day, which I, um, I thought that was odd because usually, you know, if I wake up hungry, I'm going to be hungry till I eat something. But I guess the coffee was just enough to suppress my appetite. So, I made a decision about that from now on. When I wake up hungry, since I'm not eating many calories at all uh, throughout the day while I'm on this medication. Or, well, I plan for this to be a, a long-term thing. But, um, I'm going to skip the coffee, have some breakfast. And then have some coffee so that I can get some food in that obviously my body needs and wants or I wouldn't be waking up hungry. Okay, that's my plan from here on out. Um, day six, said that I slept great, uh, but I still, I woke up hungry. Day seven, which was yesterday. And I know it's different people, everybody counts their days different, but I start my day one on shot day. So day seven would have been yesterday for me, Saturday. Um, I slept good the night before last, but I was hungry all day yesterday, okay? Um, but just after a few bites, I was done. It was one of those days where I don't want to say that like your eyes are bigger than your belly type thing, but I just thought that because of the hunger, the level of hunger that I was feeling, and uh, that when I went to eat something, that I was going to be able to eat more than what I actually could. But after just a few bites, like I said, like I was like, tapping out, done. Um, now today, shot day, I have not done my shot yet because. I like to take these glasses on and off. Um, because I wanted to have a day where I could just eat. And I know that sounds counterintuitive as to, you know, like why most people are on Mount Jaro. But since I woke up hungry the way that I did, so many days this past week, I just feel like my body needs 
um, like a refeed. I know most of you are familiar with that. Um, some people group it together when they're talking about reverse dieting. If you know anything about that, a lot of bodybuilders do that. Um, but not, I'm not talking about it to that extent or to that, you know, to any extreme level. I just feel like my body needs some extra food at this point. Um, and so I'm pushing my shot back. I'm going to take my shot actually before bed and just, I've been eating more all day. Um, but still I can just take a few bites at a time, but, um, pushing back the shots so that I can stomach those few bites. And a lot of times on shot day, um, my husband pointed this out to me actually, and I was thinking back because I didn't write it in my notes, but who would, uh, but I guess I should just face the fact and go ahead and start writing it down. Um, and I realized he was right. That's what I'm about to tell you. He pointed out, well, first he asked me, has he, he said, have you not took your shot today yet? Like, you really paying attention to this? I was like, no, why? He said, because you're usually cranky on shot day. <laughs> and I was like, at first I was like, no, I'm not. I'm never cranky. And then I was like, thinking back, I'm like, well, he might be right. And so that was a side effect that I didn't write down, but we're going to just, just try to keep it as real as we can here. And after thinking back, I, he, he's right. I have been a little cranky on shot days. I don't know why, but as I've said before, should I be drinking Diet Mountain Dew? Probably not, but it's what I'm doing. Um, so like I said, today I'm just going to eat like my stomach growling right now, y'all. So when I'm done here, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to eat. Um, you, your body, I know everybody wants these shots so that they won't eat, but your body still needs food. You can't just never eat anything. And I, I stress that so many times. Um, I know some people don't want to hear that, but that is just, that's the cold, hard facts. Yeah. Um, I mean, your body just can't function and survive and, and thrive on just air I mean there's going to come a point that you're going to have to feed it okay and um you shouldn't feel guilty about eating even if what you want to eat is something that most people would say is like an off limits food or um or something like that that you you wouldn't typically see somebody eating if if you knew that they were trying to actively lose weight okay um i i think that what you do the majority of the time is what counts the most and my approach to this thing is what's going to be sustainable and now i'm talking about for myself um you do what works for you that's why i don't do low carb i tried it in the past and it, it was a bad mistake for me personally um the day that my son came in and found me laid out on the floor because my blood sugar just bottomed out like it was it was bad y'all it was really low I can't remember the number now but um that was when I was like okay maybe maybe I shouldn't do this anymore <laughs> my husband's like you think but um if you want a cheeseburger it's okay to eat a cheeseburger as long as you don't have any you know dietary reason you know where you, you know you, you shouldn't eat a cheeseburger but if it's going to you know cause you to be sick or uh, or, or something like that, you know what I mean, but um, I would probably wouldn't in that case, but as long as you're not eating a cheeseburger every day, or I should say me, as long as I'm not eating a cheeseburger every day, I feel like it's okay if every now and then, if I want a cheeseburger, I'm to have a cheeseburger, because I had a cheeseburger today, we went to Wendy's, and, and I had a cheeseburger, now, I couldn't eat it all, 
but I didn't feel guilty or bad about what I was able to eat because I'm eating so few calories and so few, you know, grams of fat and carbs and, and all of that. The majority of the time, um, I don't feel like that cheeseburger is going to undo all my work because the majority of the time I am in, you know, what probably you really considered an extreme deficit. Um, so it's fine. I, I ate the cheeseburger. I even had a few fries dipped in ranch. Um, I got a sweet tea, but I only took a few sips of it because since um, gastric sleeve, it's so weird that sugary drinks will make me sick like that, but I could eat a piece of candy and be fine. I, I don't know if it's because, you know, they're just going through the digestive system and all that quicker and my body's just like, nope. We ain't doing that. We, we we can't. We don't like that type thing. So I don't know if if you've had weight loss surgery and that's your experience. Let me know in the comments, or or if it's just a me thing because I feel like sometimes you know my body's just weird. I'm one of those people that like if one in ten thousand people have this side effect, I'm that person. Um. So let's see. I got another notebook here. Something written down. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, it's just, just a recap of what I had here. I've, I've already told you everything on there. Sorry about holding you up. Um, but somebody had said that they, uh, on here and in my, my real life, and uh, I appreciate when you all comment and uh, talk with me in the comments. I love getting to know everybody. I love hearing about your experiences as well. Um, but they were like, I love that you have such a relaxed approach to this. Um, I wish I would have done this sooner, had this mindset sooner. Because I can say that literally for, gosh, well, a long time. I'm going to say most of my life, um, I have stressed myself out over, you know, eating this, not that, um, and restricting foods, foods that I love, instead of allowing myself just to have, you know, a little bit of something and being able to, you know, and, and walking away, um, because what I would do later on is I would go back to that thing after, you know, saying that it was off limits for so long and I would overindulge. Um, and I, I know that's an issue and a struggle with a lot of people. Um, and I'm watching how I word this because I know there's certain words that are going to get flagged. And um, I'm not one to, and I don't mean this the wrong way uh, or just came across as just being totally insensitive or, or having no compassion, but I'm not one to tiptoe around everybody else's triggers. Now, I won't blatantly, purposely, you know, just be mean and try to trigger somebody, but I can't keep track of everybody's triggers, and, you know, I, I do good enough to handle my own triggers, let alone everybody else's. I feel like my triggers are my responsibility and yours is yours, and if if I say, so if I say something that triggers you just know that it was not on purpose and that I I don't have a problem apologizing um, if I'm wrong I'm, I say I'm wrong when I'm wrong but I, I can't tiptoe or walk around you know like I'm on eggshells worrying about triggering people um, because I, I'm trying to deal with my own shit over here, y'all. I just feel like everybody in the world has some sort of trigger. Put your big girl panties on and do do you live life and, and learn how to cope and handle it. Because that's what we're all trying to do, okay? Um, and that was one of those rabbit trails that I just mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, but I said that because I'm not trying to trigger anybody who has, you know, one of those disorders. And sound like you know, I don't think it's you know, a big deal, and you should just relax about it, and um, 
and know that it is a condition and, and all that. So that's not my, you know, intention is to act like it's not that big of a deal. I know it is a big deal. Um, so if, if you struggle with, you know, um, an ED, that's a word that is flagged on here, but most of y'all know what that means. It's one of those disorders. Um, just know that I don't mean that to sound insensitive. Uh, I'm just speaking to you again about myself, my journey, my experience, and how I'm approaching this for myself. Um, that is the way that I used to do things. And now I'm like, you know, if I want a cheeseburger, I'm going to eat a freaking cheeseburger. I'm not going to eat a cheeseburger tomorrow or the next day or maybe even next week. I'm going to learn to enjoy the things that I enjoy in moderation. Um, that is what weight loss surgery is intended to help people with and to teach people. Physically, it did that for me because I just physically cannot eat certain foods or put more than a little bit, you know, of anything in my body. But the mental aspect of that is still there. Um, I did go, you know, do do the whole program and, and speak with the counselor and all of that. But from my personal experience, I mean, the doctors at the center that I went to are great. Don't get me wrong. Um, And it, so I don't mean to sound like this was a, anything on their part. I knew what not to say in order to get that surgery approved. Now, had I been completely honest with that therapist <laughs> and not, you know, kind of like, I hate to use these words, but worked their system or whatever, um, I probably wouldn't have got approved for the surgery. They probably would have been like, well, we're going to put you through some counseling, you know, and we'll get you talk to the dietitian and all these things first. I knew that going in because I knew several people, um, family members that had went to the same place and had the weight loss surgery prior to me having it. So I knew what to expect. Um, Looking back now, would I have done that same thing again? Probably. I mean, I'm just telling you, this is just me. Do I think you should? No. Um, because I, I feel like until we address the mental aspect of the things we suffer with physically, we're just, like I mentioned last week, that hamster on that wheel, just running and getting nowhere. Um but I wanted that weight off of me more than I wanted anything else. Um, and if I was completely honest with the, uh, the counselors and the, all the people that I had to talk with, they probably would have recommended that I go to an AA group as well. Um, I think that, you know, I had an issue with that. Uh, that I was substituting, I was I was using alcohol in place of food. It was like I always needed something to be focused on, and I'm still that way. Um, but I just tried to do it with more productive and constructive things, and not be you know as destructive, if that makes sense. That. Like I said, we've all got our own shit. We're just trying to work out, you know, and, and just live life. Um, so, there's no sense in being mean to each other or, you know, purposely triggering each other. But at the same time, I feel like because we all are trying to just deal, um, I don't think we should look at somebody else as being responsible for our triggers. So... That was a lot of probably the same, making the same point. This might get edited out. It might be just getting it raw and real. So let's jump on to the numbers because I know that's what most people are here for. Um, if you've been here with me since weight loss surgery, June of 2020, um, I mentioned those numbers as well because a lot of you 
are here for that. And so if you're just here for the Mount Jaro, um, I'll remind you of that too. I'm going to talk about all my numbers from the beginning of my journey because the weight loss surgery is a big part of my journey. Okay. Somebody's standing outside my door. Keep to my door. I'm trying to hear what I'm doing in here. Hello? Um, my starting weight, oh, I'm sorry if you hear kids when I, I shouldn't apologize for you hearing kids playing it. If you hear kids playing, it's the neighbor's kids outside there. They're having a, it sounds like they're having a, a good time. Just, just let them play, okay? Um, my starting weight was 259.2. Surgery day, June of 2020. I weighed in that morning at the hospital. 250. Um, when I started GLP ones, I weighed in at 199.9. Um, the first GLP one was for me was not Mount Jaro, it was actually Saxenda. So then, when my insurance decided they didn't want to do that for me anymore, uh, we went to Mount Jaro. And when I started Mount Jaro, I weighed 177. Last week, I weighed in at 168.8. And today I weighed in at 167.2, which means this week I lost 1.6. Total with the help of GLP ones, I've lost 32.7. With Mount Jaro alone, I've lost 9.8. And y'all, this is why I'm losing slower excuse me, than some people who take GLP ones, and this is why I'm okay with it. Um, I've lost a total since June of 2020, 92 pounds. That's, that's a big number. Um, I had said all along that I wanted to lose 100 pounds, that my goal weight is 150. And before GLP ones, I didn't. I'll be honest, and, and I'm usually not a negative person, and I'm one to you know, I always say, watch what you say, because you can speak things into existence, or not for said, self out of, you know, things, um, it was, I was really wondering if I was ever going to hit 150, but now, with the help of GLP-1, it's, it's looking like I might get there, um, now, as far as exercise goes, I love to lift weights, but something that I have decided to do, and I've went back and forth with this since weight loss surgery, actually, um, because, I mean, as you probably know, the more energy you exert physically, the more energy your body needs you to put in it, food, calories, to replace that energy that you used up, um, and I... I had a hard time with that after weight loss surgery because, I mean, I was losing weight anyway, and it, it was like every time I would start lifting weights, I would feel great in the beginning, but then after, you know, like within that first week or so, I would start feeling so fatigued. Um, I was having dizzy spells. I was just not okay, and I was like, okay, I, I think I need to pull back, just let the lifting weights go for now. Uh, because clearly I cannot eat enough to sustain that type of energy. Um, so I stopped. And I uh, went back in and tried it several times. And it's been the same every time. And so now that I'm on the GLP-1s, it's like I'm right back at that square one with the lifting weights. So what I have decided to do is for right now... Um, just do some body weight exercises, listen to my body, kind of how you would um, approach intuitive eating. I guess I'm intuitively exercising, just doing some body weight exercises, listening to my body. And when I feel tired, I, I'm not in a place that I, I feel like I'm, you know, should be pushing myself. Uh, the way that one normally would, just like, come on, one more, one more rep, one more rep. Mm -mm. We ain't doing that over here with, with, with this much of a uh, caloric deficit 
and uh, GLP-1, and then find ourselves laid under a barbell, okay, until somebody finds us. I'm not doing that. Um, so, um, I'm going to focus on just losing the fat that I can lose. Now, I know that muscle burns fat and, and all of that, but even when I was lifting weights and still had fat to lose, it's still, it, it's like a really narrow, fine line when you have to, when you have so much fat to lose and you want to start building muscle because in some areas of your body, uh, it's more, it happens in every area, but in some areas of your body, it's more noticeable. When you build that fat under that muscle, sometimes it, it'll just push that fat out and it just makes it temporarily. Now it, it will, you know, end up looking a lot better if you stick to it, but you'll just push that fat out and make it look worse. And that's typically, you know, the the case with the midsection is where people usually see that. But um but I just can't eat enough to let that be my process. Okay. So um I'm just kind of collecting things, getting things together and we're going to hopefully soon start on our home gym we're converting our garage but there's things that have to be done first like we had to get a new building move everything from the garage and my husband's get it situated out there and it's just a process um but i'm not ready for that physically yet anyway so it's fine um but i'm just doing what i can just making sure i'm getting some movement in every day stretching getting my steps in and i feel better doing that uh, than I did when I was trying to um, obviously use up too much of my energy lifting heavy weights. So now the body weight exercises I, I suppose would probably be equivalent to if somebody wanted to um, maybe lift a lighter weight than I was doing and uh, approach it that way would probably be fine um, but I'm okay with the body weight exercises uh, so for now that is my plan moving forward and I'm just going to kind of play it by ear um, but I do feel better about 150 being my goal now thanks to GLP ones it's just making it look uh, a little more attainable for first time in a long time so thankful for that and so I'm going to wrap this up. Um, next, you're going to see the whole real thing of uh, what I've ate all week. Uh, I felt like on some days, again, like I said last week, I did eat more. But it's not going to look like it on these videos, maybe. Because it was the same foods, but I just felt like I ate more of a quantity that the same way I did last week. And I think that I um, too, because um, I have been spring cleaning and deep cleaning my house all this week. So I've been, you know, um, busier and just doing more things that that could be why, you know, I've expended a little more energy and been a little more hungry. So since I know that to probably be the why, um, I'm not really freaked out about it. I don't think that it's the shop not doing its job or anything like that. I just think it's a change in my routine and that it's temporary. And so um, we'll just see how it goes. I'll report back next week. Um, hopefully with, you know, some more good news that the scale's going down. Um, our weight fluctuates. If it goes up a little, that's fine. I'll just, you know, refocus and do better the week after. So. Thanks for watching. Hope everybody's well. If you've not subscribed, go ahead and do that. Completely free to you. And I don't know about you, but I love free stuff. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Grab, grab that little free free notification thing there too. The little bell that you see. It'll cost you a thing. Uh, and it helps my channel out. So, But I'll check in with you guys next week. Hope everybody's well. And uh, yeah, let me know below how, how you're doing with your journey. Let's, let's keep in touch. Bye guys.